Hi, welcome everyone. This is Patty Bennett. I am really excited to show you these super cool fun fold cards. You know, I have been in the crafting and stamping world since the 1980s, and I'm always amazed when I come across a fold that I've never seen, and it just kind of captivates me, and I get so excited to make it and share it with you. So, Welcome. If you are joining live, you're going to see a red live button up there on Facebook and it should be Friday, September 27th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. If you're watching a replay, welcome as well. The advantage to joining me live, if you can, is that I'm watching the chat over here on the side so I will get to see your comments and we can chat live if you have questions. But, you know, if you're watching a replay, no problem. You can still comment and I try to go back and catch some of the questions. So, hey, hi, Leslie, Debbie, Kelly, Stacy. How is everybody? I am so happy that you're here. I have jumped on about a minute early, so if you're watching that replay, skip ahead about a minute. You won't miss a thing, I promise. But if you're watching live, give me a little shout out in the comments so that I can say hello and see that you are here. The cards that we are making today, I will show you this autumn version of this really cool circle flip fun fold. At least that's what I'm calling it. I'll tell you the story about that. Uh, we are also going to look at these cute Halloween versions. And lastly, if you have not made one of these paper rosettes, isn't that cute? We are going to make one of those at the end. So you can see I have the supplies already here. We will be making that together. I will show you how to do that if you have not made one, or maybe it's been a while. I mean, for me, it had been... Oh my goodness, I don't even know. So many years since I had made one. So we'll review that at the end if you wanted to stay tuned for that. Just letting you know. Because you know me, I like the roadmap. I like to tell you where we're headed, what we're doing, the whole bit. So we will cut and score. I'll show you all the supplies to make this style of card. You could make it for any holiday, any season, uh, a birthday, anything would be fun. doesn't have to be Halloween. And then um, at the end, I will show you the round we go dies with this die that makes it so easy to make the paper rosette. So that is the plan, my friends. <laughs> and we will get started because I think we're just about at the top of the hour. So welcome. Oh my goodness, so many people just jumped on. Hey, Debbie, Tanya. Oh, 115. Hard to think about Halloween and Christmas. My goodness. Yes, Debbie, I, I understand that. Hi, Lois and Kelly, Elaine, Jenny, Mary. Hello, Tracy. Hi, Judy, Connie. Oh, my goodness. Everybody's just jumping on. Thank you so much for joining. So let's get started with this super cool fun fold. I originally received this card in May for my birthday with this style. This is the what the fun fo fold looks like. I received it from my friend Jenny and I loved it. And what I do when I receive a card that I want to recreate at some point, I have a special little box over here on my desk and I put cards in there that I know at some point I want to copy either the color combo, the design, whatever. So this has been in my little special box since May and I decided I was going to kind of measure it, dissect it in my mind and figure out how to make it and share it with you. That's why I came up with these cards for today. And when I asked Jenny if she had already done a blog post or a video, she said not yet, but she reminded me that she saw the idea from Melissa Faust. I don't know if you have ever followed Melissa, but she is a Adorable. She is just the cutest person. She has the best personality, the best projects. She is amazing. I just love her. I've had the opportunity to get to meet her several times and just just love her. Anyway, so um, I, I said, oh, okay, that, that's right. I remember that. Thank you, Jenny, that Melissa, she saw this idea from Melissa 
So I went forward, I made my cards, and then I thought, you know what, I'm going to message Melissa and just see if Melissa has a video. So I did, and Melissa does have a video from, it was like a year or two ago, and she mentioned that she saw the idea from someone else, and so I just thought, you know, isn't that fun how the crafting community shares and evolves it's you know the telephone game how you tell somebody something they tell somebody something they tell somebody something I feel like it's like that and then we all put our own little spin on it so I just think it's so much fun so anyway Jenny thank you again for this beautiful card and thank you Melissa for the idea and for everybody who did it before that <laughs> you know what speak just before we make these speaking of uh, Jenny I don't know if you saw these cards on my blog earlier this week, but I just wanted to give these a real special shout out because this idea also came from my friend Jenny, and I see Jenny is on here today. And this is just such a fun little fold to make with the Garden Meadow Arch die. And I used the Splendid Autumn paper. And I love that these fold up little enough to go either into our regular medium envelope or you can put these in the um, note card size, the three and a half by five card size envelope if you want to. But I blogged these several days ago and linked to Jenny's video. So I just thought, since we were talking about Jenny, if you missed this blog post, and the link to her video, please skip over to my blog, pattystamps.com, after this video, and you can just scroll back a couple of days and you will find those um, projects, or they were on my business Facebook page as well. Okay, sorry, just a little commercial for Jenny there, just because I just thought that project was fabulous. So, Let's get going on the parts and pieces and make these. And I have a really fun cutting tip for you for making these cards as well. Thanks. Yes, Tammy. Love this so much as well. Hi, Polly. Hey, Robin. Nell. Oh, my goodness. So many people are on. Thank you so much for joining. You're welcome, Jenny. Yes, I love how gorgeous those cards are too, Robin. Okay, so to make these cards, I have the, the parts and pieces, let's call it that, right? I have the measurements. If you're looking for measurements, I'm going to create a PDF later today and have it on my blog post Saturday, September 28th, just so that you could download and have everything all in the same spot. But we're going to go over the measurements. I just wanted to say if you don't want to um, like sit and write or take screenshots, please don't worry about it. Please just enjoy the video today and then you can hop over to my blog and get the measurements tomorrow. So we just have, you know, your standard five and a half by eight and a half card base. I've scored it in half so that we just have just, you know, your regular card. That's the base. And then a regular quarter inch smaller four by five and a quarter designer paper. Any designer paper will work. You you know, it doesn't have to be Halloween. In fact, this I think would make an adorable birthday card. So it doesn't even have to be Halloween, really. And I'll tell you where this came from in just a minute. Just want to go over all the pieces. You will need some kind of a circle die. I found that the largest stitched uh, stylish, sorry, it's not stitch, stylish shapes. You can't say these things fast, my friends. The largest circle in stylish shapes <laughs> Gosh. is, I think it's the best one for this particular card. And, and we'll do this. Don't, don't worry. I'm just going over the supplies. If you didn't have that, if you just had a plain circle, that would work. You could also use a deckled circle. That would totally work. And I'm going to show you how I used a smaller size to make some layers as well. So that's the base and the DSP. Okay. The inside mechanism is a five by eight piece, and I just used the regular basic white. 
Uh, you could use a color. You could use, probably, you could even use designer paper. And I, these are the scoring dimensions that I used, and I'll show you how to do that, and I'll show you how to fold it. And I scored that two and a half, four and a half, and six. And then you're going to have two pieces of designer paper that just nestle right onto that. So I'll show you that on the inside. It's going to be here and here. So I actually, let me just show you it in the right place. It'll be here and here. And that piece will be your mechanism that goes inside. And that allows your circle to flip from the front to the inside, which is why I called it a circle flip fun fold. I can't remember now for sure, but I think Melissa called it something else. I really don't think there's a right or wrong name for this, but I just called it circle flip because it flips from the front to the inside. And I just think it's super cool. I love this design. So again, these measurements will be on my blog in a downloadable PDF at pattystamps.com on September 28th. If you're watching this on YouTube, I will link to that post. Oh, yeah. okay, good. Jenny likes the name. <laughs> Stylish stitched circles. I can't even say that, Connie. Oh my gosh, I'm trying to read her comment. I can't even say it. <laughs> Rhonda, thank you for joining me live. Welcome. Hi, Paula. Hi, Esther. Donna. Thank you, everybody. So let's, uh, oh, wait, just before we make it, I just wanted to show you if you're thinking, wait, I don't, I'm not recognizing this cute Halloween paper. It is in the Halloween Memories workshop, scrapbooking workshop kit slash brochure. We went over this quite extensively in a previous video, so I won't spend a lot of time. This is a downloadable brochure that you can get from my blog or from Stampin' Up! or you can just go to the online store. If you wanted to make scrapbook pages and have all the instructions and whatnot to make six pages, there's a whole kit that comes with everything. But then there's also um, the designer paper or the designer paper with a sticker sheet. So if you wanted to just get this paper, it is available online, and that's what I've used. You could also get the paper with this cute, pardon me, with this cute sticker sheet. I did not use the stickers on these cards, but you totally could. And then I've also used the Halloween Memories stamp set that is an optional item, and you can also get the matching cardstock. I think Right now, as of the time of this being live, this cardstock pack is on back order, but everything else is still available. And then at the end, we will look at that fall card, and the fall supplies are in this Autumn to Remember scrapbooking. You can get it as a workshop, or again, you could just get it as the, the card, the designer paper only or the designer paper and sticker sheet pack. So ju just as a review, just so you know that where I got these supplies. Let's see, I'm just going to see if there are any questions. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for joining live. Oh, yes, rain. Oh, my goodness. I, I honestly, I meant to say that in the beginning. Um, My my prayers and thoughts are with everybody in the path of all the storms. My goodness, so, so much going on right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut, just grabbing a full sheet of paper. You all know how to make the, the card base, right? That's, I don't think I need to cut a card base, right? This is just your typical five and a half by eight and a half scored in half, and then your layered piece of designer paper. So I'm not going to cut that on camera. You guys know how to do that. But I do want to go over this inside mechanism part with you so that you know how to make this. And then I'm going to show you a shortcut about doing this as well. So this piece is five by eight. And I would just say... Um, Okay, I don't want to get ahead of myself. 
Let's just do one first and then we will do, I'm going to show you the shortcut. Okay. So five by eight, right? You would just want to cut five inches and then you would want to extend the arm to measure at eight. Or since I know it's eight and a half, remember our tip last week, you can just shove it over to the half inch mark and cut off half an inch to make five by eight. So either way. Okay, so now we have five by eight. Okay, and then we're going to score it three times. So two and a half, and remember the light colored blade on the Stampin' Up! trimmer is the scoring blade. Four and a half. And six is easy because you just butt it up to this rail right here. You don't even have to really measure. So you just butt it up there and that's six. So there we have our piece that is for the inside and it's all scored and ready to go. Two pieces of designer paper, one and three quarters by four and three quarters, one and a quarter by four and three quarters. Very, very simple. You can just kind of almost use up scraps. Now the fun part about folding it. So I like to turn it so that this widest piece, I don't know if you can see the score marks, but this is the widest piece. I like to turn it so that it is to my right because it is going to be the piece that ends up here on the right side. So I just... That's how my brain works. Like I have to see where I'm headed. So I'm just going to put this up here. And then I like to, to kind of dissect and see what's happening. So with the wider piece on the right, you're going to flip this to the right and score. And then flip it back as if we were kind of doing a Z. But here's where it's backwards of what you might think. You're not doing this again, like to make an accordion, do, 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 you know, like that. You're actually flipping it backwards again. So let me just go over that one more time. So when you have your five by eight piece, your largest goes to the right. You flip this on top of it and use your bone folder. You flip this one back. So you're kind of thinking, okay, like Z fold, mountain valley, mountain valley. But then this one gets folded backwards again. Okay. So that our piece, can you see? That's how it's going to go inside the card. So I hope, uh, Margaret, I'm not on YouTube. I don't do lives on YouTube. The recording will be on YouTube. You can search for Patty Bennett or Patty Stamps on YouTube and find my 500 videos there. Um, sorry, lost my train of thought. Okay, so then we're going to be putting it inside of our base card. Um, when I made my first one, I didn't want to mess up and put the designer paper in the wrong spot. So I glued the whole thing together and then I put my two pieces of designer paper inside. But once you make one and you see, okay, my designer paper is going in these two middle slot, or not really slots, but spots, then it's not too hard. So you can see that they're just going to go right there. And it probably is easier to go ahead and put your designer paper in or on right now than to fuss with it when it's all folded up. But whatever works for you, you can always wait and maybe you look at it and say, oh, I don't know. I don't want to do the green. I want to do something else. And then maybe you would change your mind. So either way will work. But I'm just going to go ahead and put those in so that you can see if you want to do it in this order, then you can see what that piece will look like. So we'll set the insides aside. 
And then let's work on the front. So I found that it's probably best to just simply put your adhesive around the outside and then just a, a little bit maybe down here. I tried to be fancy and I tried to guess where the circle was going to be and I tried to do a little more glue in the beginning when I did it and it didn't work out and I'm going to show you what I mean. So then you just glue, attach, and then we're going to cut the circle. So like I said, the largest stylish shapes <laughs> circle is the one that I found. I just think this kind of works the best. It's a good proportion and it cuts really nicely. So I'm going to use my little post-it flags to just hold it in place because I'm going to turn around and die cut. So let me just leave you with these cuties and I'm going to turn around and die cut this. The reason I said only put your adhesive around the outside is that you really want these pieces to be separate. You don't want them stuck together. I mean, you could leave them stuck together, but I preferred to not have this pattern be the circle that is flipping back and forth. I wanted to do something else with it. So this is going to be my circle that flips back and forth. And then, of course, we'll decorate it, but, but that's that. So then to put this paper inside, I just have to tell you something. I was really tickled with myself, as my grandma would have said. I was kind of fussing with, like, how, what's the best way to do this? And I came up with a method and I you know, made all these, photographed them, they're ready for my blog, the whole bit. And then when I contacted Melissa to say, did you do this card? And she said, yes, she showed me her video. She did it the exact same way. And I was so happy that I actually had figured this out. So here's my tip. And this is what Melissa did. And, and it works fabulous. So you have your piece. You're going to fold it like this so that it's kind of... It's like kind of just the size of the inside of the card with a border, okay? So I'll do that one more time. So you're just going to fold like that. And then I'm gonna flip it over, holding it. And I'm putting glue only on this section that's going to stick over here, okay? Now you butt that piece up into the fold. Oops, don't let go. Okay, into the fold. And then you lay that down. So that's going right into the fold. Let me just make sure that that still folds. Yep. And then I'm pressing down over here. And if everything went as planned, you have top, right, and bottom as a fairly equal border. And this, this piece is loose. Remember, we only glued that one section, but this is butting up right here into that fold. So it's pretty easy once you see it done. And I think this is just a, a really, really fun, fun fold. <laughs> um, let's see, was there a question? Oh, Debbie says you can hear a pin drop during the instruction period. <laughs> oh, good, Anna. I'm glad you have a fun um, project to work on this weekend. So if we go back to our finished card, you can see that here's the panel that I just glued. And now we need to glue that piece that goes here on the inside that makes this column. So I think there are a few ways to do this. And if you wanted to, you could kind of hold it in place and you could take a pencil and you could mark where the extent 
is going to be. I just kind of eyeballed it, and that may not be the best way, but but I eyeballed it. So I just put some glue across here, down under the circle, like this. That's what I did, and it works fine. I've made several, and it worked totally fine. So actually, let me just wipe. I think this is going to stick out right there. Let me just wipe that off. I might have gone a little too happy with the glue. And then I'm just going to close it up. Hope I'm on camera. Sorry about that. Okay, close it up. So now, let me just hold that for just a, a little second more. Because liquid glue, you know, it needs a minute to adhere. So I'm just holding. And then, hopefully, <laughs> all the right parts got glued. So it will fold flat. It will open up. Isn't that fun? I think it's just the coolest card. Now here is a learn from Patty moment. Because the very first one I made... I took my circle and I glued it here. And that is not correct, my friends. That will not make it flip to the inside. You glue it to the right section. And I don't know why my brain did not catch that when I was looking at Jenny's card, but I ruined the entire first card. So I hope that watching this video will help you. <laughs> So you're going to put the glue over here on the right section. Take that circle that came out of your card. Nestle it right back in. And again, liquid glue takes a minute. You could use a different adhesive if you'd like. Just going to hold it for a second there. Then there is your fun flip mechanism. Isn't that just the coolest? I think this card is so much fun. Absolutely so much fun. Okay, so now we have some options about decorating this circle. So let me show you on this card. I used some of this uh, bubble pattern right here, the green bubble pattern, and my deckled circle, which nestles nicely on top of that orange. So you see how we have layers there. And then I took the next smaller stylish shapes <laughs> and die cut that cute potions and spells pattern to just make three layers on there. So that would be kind of just the simple, very easy way to create some interest on that front circle. On the inside, I'll show you, that is from Potions and Spells, and I stamped the cat on one of those, it's the, uh, what's it called? Flora something, Flora, Regal Flora die cut. I just love this die cut. I don't know what it is about this die cut, but I'm, I just, I'm fascinated with that shape. Oh, here, I have these die cut to show you. So you have some options if you want to start layering with circles and, and it's fun just to kind of mix and match and play. And, you know, you could do, you could do any combination of those circles. So that's, that's kind of the, the simple version of decorating that circle. And then on, was it Tuesday, I think? Yes, on Teach It Tuesday with Tammy and Jenny, Tammy was using the Round We Go bundle. And I thought, oh my goodness, this whole thing is based on circles. And why not incorporate the rosette onto this circle? Because, I mean, it's a circle, right? And I thought, fabulous. And I then I also had thought, even though I'd already cut my layers, here you have two options for 
different sizes of circles, one with the starburst, one with the scallop. So you could also cut those. But I used this to make the rosette, so I'll show you that. And you could also use these, well, any of these, all of these, right? Look at all those circles. I mean, you could just layer, 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 layer circles. And if you're not familiar with this bundle, it is in the annual catalog. It is on page 63. And it looks like that. So it shows you that you can make all these cute different layered rosettes. And we will do that in a minute. So if you haven't made one or you, it's been a long time, like possibly because for me it had been a long time, I want to show you how I made that. And I have two things to show you before we get to that, before we do the rosette. I just wanted to go over this adorable version. So if you don't want to do Halloween, no problem. I used that Autumn to Remember scrapbooking kit and you did just this cute fall version. Isn't that fun? I really liked this. And I wanted to just point out, let me find my packet. I wanted to point out something fun. I used the two-tone paper. Do you remember? Let me show you. Do you remember how we reviewed this two-tone paper? The new, um, we're going to have all 50 colors eventually. We have, what, about 14 of them now? I used the lighter side of the olive paper and stamped on it, and I loved... Can you see that? I just fussy cut it. It gives you a beautiful green background, but the nice detail in that stamp. And then same thing, here's the pecan pie, and I stamped on the lighter side and fussy cut that out. And that is from this Autumn to Remember stamp set that's in that scrapbooking kit. So I used these two leaves from that stamp set. I just wanted to show you that and same parts and pieces you know that we already rent, went over I don't think we need to review that again but I was ready in case we needed to so let me pause for just one second I'm gonna see if there were any questions and then I'm gonna show you the cardstock cutting tip that I promised you oh good Jenny says it will help her to remember how to make it again <laughs> Oh, thank you, everybody. I'm so glad. Easy enough to make kits her October class. Um, okay, Connie, sorry. I'm not sure about which October class. Thank you, Lori. Yes, you're welcome to watch the replay. Good, Susan. Thank you. I'm glad that this was helpful. Thanks, Robin. I'm just reading your comments. Okay, Shan says do it again. She has a triangle, not a square. Okay, I will. I'm going to do this again. I will do it again. All right. So let me show you this die cutting tip. And I just want to ask, was anybody on here last week when I gave you a, a paper, excuse me, not die cutting tip paper cutting and measuring tip. Was anybody here last week when I gave you the tips about cutting layers for your cards? And I know the people that were here found it really helpful. So I'm going to give you another like a cheat sheet idea to make two of these at once. But but tell me in the chat, were you here last week? Did you like that tip? And, you know, did you love that? Because I, I just thought it was pretty eye-opening for some of you. I know a lot of you were like, oh my gosh, that's the best tip ever. Yes, yes. Okay, you were here. You were here. Good, good. Regal Flora. Yes, thank you, Connie. Okay, good, good. I'm glad that you guys love the tips. So I decided I'm going to show you a tip to make two of these at once. And again, this is just how my brain works. I To me, it's better to make more at once than to kind of, okay, eight and a half by 11, make two. Here's what I did. Here's the visual. I'm going to cut it for you. I cut half inch off the long side because 
remember we need to end up with five by eight pieces of cardstock. So if you cut half an inch off the eight inch side, now we have that eight inch dimension. So there's that, right? That means throw it away. That squiggle means, well, okay, don't throw it away. Tracy's gonna, Tracy's yelling at me. I can hear her. Don't throw it away. Keep this and stamp on it. That's what I meant to say. I didn't mean throw it away. Okay. <laughs> So now, keeping the paper just like it is, so we cut the half inch off, keep it right there. Now we're going to do those three scores that we did on the first one. So two and a half, four and a half, and six. Okay, now flip it, flip it. Cut it at five. And I said, and 10, that's really kind of silly. You're just cutting it at five again. So let me just, let me change that. Hang on, because that's going to bother me. So you cut it at five and you cut it at five again. So if you took a screenshot, take another one so that you end up with your two five by eight pieces and they're already scored. Ta -da! Isn't that fun? I love shortcuts like that. That is how my brain operates. Now, Shan said, could I fold it again because she ended up with a triangle. So the largest section is on the right and you fold over to the right so that you're covering, okay? Now you fold back as if you were going to be making a Z fold, okay? But now you fold back again. So it's not like a Z fold. You're ending up with this. This is how it's going to go in the card, okay? I'll just do it one more time real quick. So biggest section to the right, fold to the right, fold to the left, and then left again. That's your inside mechanism. Shan, I hoped that I hope that helped. Okay, let's talk about the cute rosette. Oh wait, did we have any questions on that? Okay, love the tip. Good, good, good. Yes, Tracy, you were yelling at me. I heard you. <laughs> Good. Debbie used my tip last week to make 20 cards quickly. Yay. I love it. I love it. All right. Um, good. I'm glad you like the shortcut, Donna. Thank you. So let's talk about the cute, cute, cute rosettes. Because these are just beyond so much fun. We're going to need strips of paper. Again, it doesn't have to be Halloween. So Please, if you're like, oh, I'm not making Halloween, I don't need Halloween, please don't click off. Please go ahead and watch because you can make this with any paper that you want. So in the round we go die set, there is this piece. And what this does is it allows you to make a rosette that either has the pointy, um, wait, what's the word for this? Okay, this is scallop. This is, why did my brain just go blank? Um, point, what's the word? Not pointed. It's like a fence. I don't know. What's that called? My goodness. Well, somebody will help me with the word. So anyway, you have scalloped or you have pointy end. I don't know. Whatever the word is, right? And then you can cut strips so that, here, let me lay it down so I can show you. So that, so that you can, have the pointy, what? why, picket, picket, yeah, pinking, pointy scallop, I know, there's got to be a better word, zigzag, I don't know, whatever, you guys are so helpful, but I, I think there's a better word, and I don't, I can't think of it, so anyway, you can make it so that the pointy ends are on the outside, or if you cut it and you flip it and cut it this way, you're going to have the scallopy ends, so here's an example of the scallopy ends, and then this one had the pointed ends. This one also had the pointed ends. 
Now, what I did, and you don't have to do this, but I took my little T-square, my, my ruler. Well, it doesn't have to be a T-square, just a ruler. And I measured and I said, okay, my circle is three inches. So I want my rosette smaller. So I thought, well, I think I want my rosette to be about two and a half. Okay. So then you go half of that. So one and a quarter. So one and a quarter inch strips. Okay. If you cut one and a quarter inch strips, it's going to make a two and a half inch rosette. It's going to double it. So whatever size you want your rosette to be, you need to um, do half of that, and that's your strip that you cut. And then when you put it together, which I'll show you, it's going to make that size. I hope that made sense. Um, I hope it made sense. So let's pretend here. Let's let's look at this. So let's say I want the scallopy one. We're going to look at the green one. So you're going to just move that up so that you're barely cutting any off. You're going to cut one and then you're going to cut a second one. So here's one and here's a second one. You need two pieces. Okay, so that's the first thing you do. You cut your strip and you cut two pieces. Okay, so we have our strip, we have our two pieces, and then you take, oh my gosh, I put, hang on, I put my tear and tape in the box for our team event tomorrow because we have a love to stamp group event tomorrow morning and I put, I put my tear and tape in the box for that. So luckily I have another roll right here. Okay, so then we take tear and tape and I recommend tear and tape because you really need this to stick. So one end, can you see how that end does not have a scallop? One end has a scallop, one end does not. That's where you put the tear and tape. Okay, so right there. I'm really going to push because you don't want that to come apart. I'm going to take off my tear and tape. And then this little bit that hung over, I'm just going to kind of fold it back on top of itself. I don't want excess. Uh, oh gosh, here is where I used my grid. Hang on, I don't want to put my whole glass mat in here. Let me just grab my a piece of grid paper that I'm going to tuck under here because this is really helpful in getting this lined up. If you place this piece on a grid and then we're going to take the end with the scallop on top of our tear and tape and you line it up so that it's going directly straight across and you line it up with a grid, that is the best way to get this in an absolutely, well, I'm not going to say perfect, but you know what I mean, to get it to be as perfect as you possibly can and lined up. But you can use your glass mat or your grid paper to do that. And then you're just going to start accordion folding. And since these are already scored, it's really simple. Now, I've already done this one, so you don't have to sit and watch me do the whole thing but I need to get it back into a circle, or excuse me, into a, a folded up piece to make my circle, okay? So here is, isn't that teeny? And it's gonna make this cute rosette, isn't that funny? So you're going to scallop this whole thing, not scallop, accordion fold this whole thing so that you have this kind of, you know what this reminds me of? When I was little and we'd go to a restaurant and you'd take the, wrapper off the straw and then you drop the water and then it expands you know the worm thing right so now I'm going to get my hot glue gun and it's been already plugged in so hopefully we're all good to go and here is where you need to have two circles there's a circle on the back that is holding the whole thing together and then there's another circle on the front that kind of becomes your cute decorative element. So the one on the back can be absolutely any color. It's never going to show. Don't worry about it. It can be a scrap. 
whatever you want. I just punched it out of Granny Apple Green. And then I love, I believe this is in the annual catalog. There's white and green and pink. And I know I cheated a little bit. I just grabbed, what is this? A one and a quarter inch punch for the front. So you want to have a circle ready for the front and a circle ready for the back. You can use a die. I know it was just like way quicker to use the, um, the punch. So that's what I did. So sorry. All right. So then we need to make this into a circle. So we're going to take the tear and tape on onto one end here. Just making sure that's really on there. Pull off the release tape. Fold back any excess so that it's not sticking out. And then you're just going to bring this around. Okay, there's the tear and tape. And then I am going to place one end on top of the other hold that together so now i have this little circle thingy and you just want to go ahead and reinforce make sure that all of your accordions are accordioning accordioning wait i don't even know is that a word accordioning you know what i mean okay and then you just flip it down and push. I lost one of my accordions right here. Hang on. Come on. Accordion yourself. This is the finicky part of it all. Just have to push it into place. That one is, there we go. <laughs> and then the one next to it says, I'm not going. <laughs> Oh, that's hysterical. Come on, you need to cooperate. <laughs> oh my goodness, why? There, finally. <laughs> okay, so when you have it all accordioned and pushed down, you get your hot glue and get a good size glob here on that backing circle and any size circle, any color, doesn't matter. And then you just kind of scoot this over and put it on top and you just push down and the glue usually oozes up through that middle hole. That's just what it does. And you hold it there just for a couple seconds. And then you have, see, it's not even in the center, but that's okay. It just needed to hold this together long enough to um, get it to stay. And then you have your cute little rosette. So then on the front, you can just put your whatever circle you are wanting to finish with. Then you can get that totally centered. So you don't have to worry about the back. Oh my gosh, this would make the cutest flower. Look at that. Oh, I might save this one for a flower project. <laughs> my goodness. So there's the rosette. Aren't they cute? Aren't they fun? Adorable on banners, on cards, on um, packages, tags. Uh, just so much fun. So cute. So, so, so cute. Just make sure you have that silicone mat so that you don't burn your work surface or whatever. This is the circle that was in the round we go dies that we looked at earlier. It's this one right here. And so depending on what size you end up with on your, here, I'll show it to you this way just so you can see, it will layer depending on the size that you make your um, rosette. It, you can layer it onto that or you can just layer it onto the straight onto here. Um, I think, please hold, I want to show you one thing I did that I thought turned out super cute. Did I have extra circles? Maybe I didn't. Okay, one thing that I did, so here's the circle that came out of here, right? 
One thing I did was I took that next size stitched shape or the decal circle, doesn't matter, any, any other circle that's a little bit smaller. Sorry, fingers aren't cooperating. See, any circle that's a little bit smaller so that I could reuse this circle. And that's what I did behind here. So this orange one is this pattern. And I die cut a smaller circle so that I had the green, the orange, and then the rosette. So any way that you want to layer anything that you would like to do, I, I think that one's not going to show. No, I would need a, a larger green one, but you can just, however you want to layer it and make those fun circles, you can do that. Oh, thank you, Jen. <laughs> Jackie says, love how your brain works, flowers. <laughs> Thanks, Patricia. Yeah, it does look like a sunflower. If, if I would have thought about the colors, maybe I could have put like brown in the center and it would totally look like a cute sunflower. That would have been adorable. Oh, Shan, I'm glad you like it. Yes, accordion. According, according, I can't even say it. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Jagged edge, I like that, Kim. Pinking like pinking shears, pointed, zigzag. Yep. Thank you, everybody. I I don't know why I can't think of what this you know, whatever. We're not gonna go over that again. <laughs> All right, so any questions on creating the circle flip? fun fold or the rosettes and I'm happy to stick around for a few minutes and answer questions and again if you were looking for dimensions check pattystamps.com on September 28th and you will be able to find all the dimensions uh, as well as pictures of these cards I have all the pictures ready for you Oh, good, Marva. I'm glad you'll make them. Thanks, Donna. So glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> Robin says, as long as you can show us, it doesn't matter what you call it. <laughs> oh, does the rosette mail well? So that's a good question. I have not mailed one. I would put this in a padded package. So it's going to have to go as a, you know, a package in a padded envelope, which is is not cheap, but I really think it's so cute. It would be totally worth it. And, you know, it's not like I'm going to send 400 of these for Halloween, right? It's not like Christmas cards. So um, to mail one or two of these, I think would be well worth it. <laughs> but yeah, I would probably, I would put this in a padded envelope, I think. That's a great question. Oh, Jean, is it Jean? I'm glad you enjoyed it. Thanks, Kelly. Thank you, Darlene. Thanks, Nell. Thank you, Julie. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Lori. So many sweet comments. You are all so sweet. Thank you. I don't see any questions yet. I'm just going to hang out for a minute. Make sure, see if you have any questions. And if not, then I will let you go. I have an awesome card for you next Friday. I can't wait to show you next Friday's live. It's going to be very cool. You're welcome, Connie. Thanks, Anita. Any other questions? Do I ever do classes in person, says Melanie. So, um, not really. I do have um, one or two big weekend events that are open to customers and demonstrators. And those are, we call them soirees. I partner with Kirsten Del Rosario. They're here in the San Francisco Bay Area. So we have done those twice a year. Tammy and I have done a few in-person classes. We did, was it, Tammy, did we do February and, I can't remember, May, June? I don't remember now exactly, um, but I don't do them often. My business mostly is online. Tammy and I are debating about doing our mega class for December as an optional in person. So maybe, maybe, maybe. Let's see. Karen says, I love your fun fold and Halloween cards are adorable. She passed up this die set, but might have to reconsider. Yes, definitely. 
Oh, how did I adhere the leaves on the autumn one? So on, on this circle, I put some glue and I just stuck the two leaves onto this circle. And then I kind of anchored it with this die cut and I have um, foam adhesive sheet piece under there. So it's kind of anchoring it from the top so that, do you see that it's loose? Well, it, it's not loose. It's attached only to the circle. It's not attached to the card. So that's a great question. Thank you for checking on that. Yes, padded envelope, Carol. Let's see. Um, yes, sunflowers. I think these would be great for sunflowers, Debbie. Thanks, Donna. I'm glad you learned so much. Oh, good. Tanya says her Halloween order is arriving today. Well, have fun. Oh, you want a sneak peek for next week? I will. I'll sneak it to you. Sure. Any special glue gun I recommend? So this was like, I think, a dollar at the dollar store. So the cheaper, the better. I'm sure they're on Amazon. Um, there's nothing really I recommend. But yeah, just it's cheap is fine. Cheap is fine. So Shan says she's still getting a triangle. I'm wondering if you got all of the scores. Did you score it three times? I'm wondering if maybe you didn't get three scores because to make a triangle, you would only have two scores. So make sure you're scoring it two and a half, four and a half, and six because it, it there's there's really not a way to get a triangle if you have three score marks. So um I'm I'm thinking that maybe one of the scores didn't get done, Shan. February and May. Thank you, Tammy. I, I couldn't remember. Oh yes, Lori. You would be welcome to come to the soirees. Let's see. You are welcome, everyone. Oh, low heat. Yeah, that's true, Melanie. I forgot that you can get low heat and high heat. I have no idea what this is. It doesn't say. But yeah, low heat is always good. So you wanted a sneak peek for next week. So I will show you. Oh, wait. I thought they were in this box. Uh, maybe they're in this box. Hang on. I have so many boxes of cards. Oh, they are. They're right here. Okay. So for next week... We are going to use the Splendid Autumn paper, and I'm going to show you how to make these with these beautiful sky backgrounds. Oh my gosh, these are so pretty, and they're so easy. You are going to love making them. Oh, I have this too to show you. Remember what I showed you in the beginning with the, um, what is called, meadow, something, garden meadow dye. Remember the arch cards I showed you? I made one with the really cute same Halloween paper. Isn't that fun? So cute. So forgot to show you that. All right. Oh, yes, yeah, Susan, I've changed the time to 10 o'clock about a month ago. So it's just going to be 10 from now on. And I, I post on Fridays on my blog and on my business page, circled in red with the time change. So sorry about that. But yes, it's going to be 10 o'clock from now on. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining. I am just always have so much fun chatting with you and showing you everything that I have made and teaching you all the tips and tricks. And I am so thankful that you join me. I appreciate you. And I will see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs>